Next inductee into the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame is arguably the most well-known and most beloved player to have ever played the game of Australian Survivor. Across his two seasons, Luke Toki had fans hooked to the screen with his energetic and relatable personality, incredibly strong social and strategic game, and some of the most entertaining gameplay that has ever been seen in any of the eight seasons of Australian Survivor. Solidifying his greatness are the statistics that back up his time on the show. Luke holds the record for most days played by a male contestant with 94 days, is one of only three contestants who have played over 90 days in total, one of only five contestants to hold a single season individual immunity win record with four immunity wins during his time on season six, and is one of only five contestants who have made it to the jury on both of his times playing Survivor. He also arguably has the most memorable one-liners and most quoted confessionals during his time on the show, and as many many nicknames to boot. Luke absolutely dominated both the fan and expert panel vote in his first year of eligibility for the Australian Survivor Hall of Fame, firmly cementing his legacy as arguably the face of the Australian version of the franchise. And now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, it's time to speak to the man himself to formally induct him into the Australian uh, Survivor Hall of Fame. Luke, massive congratulations oh on, on being God. inducted. <laughs> that was... I love that because that even gave me a bit of an insight into, um, you know, uh, the presence I've had in the game. And, yeah, how cool is that? <laughs> Don't want to inflate your head too much there, Luke. But, I mean, I've got to read it out. Like, come on. Man. Yeah, no. Nah, you know. <laughs> you know, well, when you go out there, you just go out there and play your hardest. I don't think any of that actually, like, I thought of that. You know, while I'm playing, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm going to, uh, be the person who, you know, who, who gets past the day, you know, in so many days or so many um, uni wins, you're kind of in the moment, I feel like. Because mm -hmm. in the end, you know, winning is the, the ultimate goal, um, which has eluded me twice. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, well, you got I'm the Hall sure of that... Fame now. Not, not, yeah, not all the winners yeah. are in there yet, Luke. So yeah, it's... okay. Yeah, well, this is, yeah, this is another, um, you know, great <laughs> achievement. So, I'm, uh, yeah, uh, look, I, Survivor's definitely um, enriched my life a lot. Which I can imagine when you submitted that application to be on the show, you could never imagine how much it would have changed your life as it no doubt has over the last four years. Um, yeah, look, you know, it's, I, I, I've, when you go out and play, especially my first season, you know, you, you ultimately don't want to be the first boot. And um, I've always tried to, you know, stay in touch to some degree with a lot of the first boots because you never know, just for instance, like peer winning, um, you can either go out first or you can win the, the whole show. So uh, I feel like if we played the game over and over and over, you know, you can never really guarantee where you'll finish. But when it comes to, like, I, I call them triple threats, people that can, uh, that are good everywhere, um, they're, they're like, I, I like to think that I'm a bit of a triple threat when it comes to the whole game in whole. So, yeah, like, I, I, yeah. I, and, and on top of that, um, I, I really feel like I've, I've had fun throughout the whole journey. Like, I have looked back on it, even though I have lost and I haven't made the end, I've kind of appreciated the actual, um, the relationships I've, I've forged through, you know, the, um, each show and um, which still carry to this day, you know, they're still wishing me good luck on Big Brother, um, you know. And also I feel like now with Big Brother, like I feel like the weight, weight on my shoulders to just try to represent the survivor community and how durable, uh, I'd say that's the word, like durable um, people are that go out and play it, you know, and the, and the, and the fan base behind it because, we, you know, you never know what to expect when you go out and survive. All you know is it's going to be hard. And I can guarantee <laughs> you, I would say 99% of the people that go out there leave the game with appreciation that it was hard, you know. Yes. And, um, and 
and and that's that's what it is, you know. So Survivor's going to be always my number one thing. I don't know where my life's going to go in the next twenty years. I don't know what I'll be doing, but I actually feel like Survivor's uh, going to be always like in my blood. If that if that makes. Um, were you a Survivor fan when you submitted your application? And, and when you did, did you think you had a good chance of actually getting on the show? Um, I didn't really feel like I, like that I would have an amazing chance. I thought I'd have an average chance, like a regular chance, just like everyone else. I never really thought that I would actually be picked, um, you know, would you say? But um, I, I did have... You know, there's a lot of things out there with YouTube saying the only thing I knew about the show was I watched Tony's season, but that wasn't the case. When I was younger, I did grow up. Um, grow up. We, we did watch um, a bit of Survivor. I, I Like Boston Rob, you know, I just remember, you know, you can't remember every single episode or every single strategy play, but I do remember as a kid that um, I remember watching... Um, when Boston Rob and um, Rupert went at it, they were they got on the same tribe because Rupert was uh, very well liked and as as a fisherman. So mm-hmm. as kids, I don't think we really thought too much about the strategy. It was more about the challenges and it's about providing for the for your tribe. So that's what kind of resonated with me. And Rupert was the best. Um, even better than Boston Rob. And then Boston Rob and him got on the same tribe and they caught fish and Boston Rob came back with more fish than Rupert. And that's when Boston Rob overtook Rupert as like, as an all-rounder. He was better in challenges. He could catch more fish than Rupert. And it was, you know, that's for me, was like, that's what I want to (laughs) be. I want to be the fisherman. You know, I want to be the guy who comes back and, and, you know, I do that in my own life. Like I I go out snorkeling for hockey and I I just have a Gigi. When I used to go bodyboarding, all my mates used to have wetsuits and I'd be the only one in shorts. Wow. Like, and it'd be freezing cold, but I'd just deal with it. And that's how I always dealt with the rain and the weather. If you ask everyone on 2017 when the weather came in, I was still walking around when it's piercing down, piercing down like sideboards. And I'm, oh, everyone's huddling together. I was jumping out trying to put ferns on the top, still trying to like close holes in the gaps. Um, don't get me wrong, after about six hours, the old, I started shivering. But after, you know, <laughs> and, and they, like a lot of them will say, they're like, we knew things were getting bad when Luke started shivering because. I could handle it um, quite well, you know, but um, the the players and, you know, you, when you think of the players and I remember just like looking back and just seeing, you know, whether it be Sarah walking down the, down the beach carrying like a thousand sticks, you know, like in a sarong and you just, and that's midway, she's skin and bone and you're like, she's... Um, you know, made for the show. Like she doesn't whinge about how hard it is, um, you know, and, you know, whether it was um, Tara still, you know, like still through through everything was still kind of like um, feeling like she's on the bottom and moving over. She was always still able to have a laugh and, and, and even through us going at each other could still um, bounce back and, and repair those relationships you know, like, it, it, that's the one beauty I, I love about it is being able to be blindsided and the people that can still repair their relationship afterwards and not take it um, to heart. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, yeah, like, the game uh, really produces some resilient people um, that don't know they're that resilient until they're out there. 100%. 100%. I love, I love that idea of you watching... Rupert and Boston Rob and and you almost have become Australia's version of Rupert Luke that yeah. Rupert was so <laughs> beloved back in the day and and now yeah. you're kind of this beloved I like the mm. comparisons there <laughs> yeah well it was funny so even this is before this show I remember as well when he came back and then he dug a hole in the sandbar yes you know and I and 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 like I, I like that little moment where he dug the hole in the sand and tried to create a camp and then the the water came in and they're at night time, all this shit's yep. getting washed yep. out. Like, 
Like, then that stuff's entertaining. Yep. Because he's thinking out the box. He's doing something different. And, like, don't get me wrong, it didn't really show you how, how amazing, like, of a survivalist uh, of a move that was. But for TV viewing, oh, that is amazing. gold. Yeah. A gold. And so, you know, I kind of put that in one. And then I obviously with Tony with the Spy Shack, like, I watched that. Then I got Rupert catching fish. But, like, as much as, you know, you watch all that and that's the most entertaining and that's the most, like, the, the stuff that it is, you still go out there and, you know, I think what I did was take all those little things off those amazing players and put it into one, um, still using it all to try to win the game. You know, I, I feel like I did enough research throughout that to understand what the game entailed where I feel like maybe sometimes others don't. They, they, um, I feel like definitely as we move on, like you're watching South, South Africa Survivor, um, and as we move into other countries, I feel like everyone's, you know, we're at a point now that if you're going to go away and play Survivor, you know, there is everyone's coming to play the game yeah. pretty much straight away. Um, a lot more than, say, Rupert and all Boston Rob that back initially when they first played, of course, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, would you say it's the 21st century uh, game of Survivor? You know, it's, it's evolved just like sport has, just sure. like um, it, everything evolves as we get, when you get more information and you get more seasons and you see what works and see what doesn't. Um, you know, there's some, like, just watching Winners of War and, you know, and um, you're always on the lookout for little things like, uh, who was it that tried, I forget his name right now, um, that tried to get the idol off the front of the... Oh, um, Adam. Uh, Adam. Adam, Adam, yeah. yeah. So, Adam, yeah. like, so even, like, Adam, like, like, it just shows that his returnee one, like, how like aware of, of mm. sim, symbols, um, you know, Dave on our season, you know, he cut the, he, on the fishing tackle box, he cut the, um, there was a logo kind of thing off it and then put it on top of a fake idol to make it look more like an idol. Like just the logos, the the artwork that they give you, you try to take advantage of every single thing that you can get your hands on because you don't know what's happening. Like 41 right now, they're, they're having to say these funny little um, sayings. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. Like, you know, like, and, and people aren't picking up on it on the first time it got said. They're just like, weird oh, every like time they crazy. do it, but they just keep doing it because eventually yeah. they're gonna, you know, get it out there. <laughs> exactly. So when you're when you're walking into these, you are like your ears are up, your eyes are, you know, all over the joint. You um, and it's so fun, <laughs> because uh, that's uh, when you're a game player, you are looking out for all those things. So you kind of you're on on point as as much as you can be. Which, I mean, fun is definitely a word that I think if anybody thinks of you, Luke, they definitely yeah. uh, they understand that word. I mean, across your two seasons that you played, you mentioned some of the players you're up against there. You've played against three winners, of course, two mm. of, of Australian Survivor. Who's the hardest player that you ever came up against across your two seasons? The hardest player? Um, look, you've got to put Dave in the mix. You know, Dave, even though he won, take it out of the thing, he always went, Full ball in strategy, full ball uh, in the challenges, and his social game. You know, he he um, and he doesn't hold a grudge. Um, people that I think, look, look like I know, um, like look, I, I, girls wise, you know, you you have like I I rate Sarah as well. Um, you know, just through the survival aspect as well. Anyone that doesn't whinge. Look, Pia never whinged. You know, Janine's great. Like, I, I'd like to think that the people that, that are also, they talk so highly of, um, you know, online, it, the resignation, or, or not resignation, um, it resonates with the viewers 
kind of exactly how it does portray out there a bit, you know. So, um, oh, look, you can you can go through a list. Like, Lockie's just a complete competition uh, competition bat. Like, he goes hard. Like, I can't wait to watch him on S- SAS. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, another one that probably doesn't uh, get mentioned too much, but is um, is uh, the horse on uh, yes, you know, Sean, dude. Sean, I'm telling you, is like he's he was very very good at the game, and even Matt, like, um, look, I never played on the other series, but like um, Matt, the one I went up with, he's actually a really good guy. I've even got his hair now. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you, you like Warburg, him so much. Right? It's it's worn it's yeah. worn off on you, basically. Yeah, like he's just <laughs> like they um. You'd be surprised how socially good he was in the game as well. Even though in the challenges he'd talk it up and stuff, but <laughs> around camp he is a, a very good bloke, you know. Fantastic. Um, uh, so yeah, look, you, I, could, I, I feel like I could nearly talk about every single contestant in a great way because um, that's what, that's what they are. You know, they all went out there, and we all battled it out, and I lost, and someone won, and another person lost, and we all, yeah. Kept that's why the whole way, yeah, basically, all the the whole way, the whole way. You know, and, and that's why even the first boots, like you just never know. Yeah, hundred um, uh, percent. Yeah, so I feel like definitely how you handle it after the after being eliminated um, is something that I take notice of as well. You know, because like you know, victory. What is it called? Um, gracious in victory and gracious in defeat. You know, and I feel like that's um, something that rings true to me as well. So great attitude, Luke. I like mm. it. We're learning a lot. But before yeah. we do let you go uh yeah. what's what's the life of luke Toki right now like obviously we're, we're seeing you right now on our screens on big brother vip but outside of that uh, i mean kind of what's life like for you at the moment what are you up to oh look right now every time after these shows i, I kind of try to the first the, it's it's normally a, a very simple two months after the shows i go into a bit of a like a recluse state like I kind of don't I haven't caught up with many friends I kind of just spend a lot of time with the kids and family like I've just making I've just made some little you know little TP for my daughter in the room just like nice. five minutes ago so I um and a lot of park visits a lot of uh going to the pools and back to work but um I am studying which is a surprise I'm studying to do real estate Right. Um, wow, I can see career. that. You'd be great yeah. at real estate, Luke. Wow, yeah, I'd I'm buy just, a house I'm, from you. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm trying to just um, change my career path because it's been in the mining industry for the last 15 years and I just, I'm just i stuck behind a computer and when I was on the mines, I was always stuck in a, um, a cab, would you call it? And I had no, like, I had no... Um, like I wouldn't speak to anyone for 12 hours a day and then I'd go back to my donger and I'd train by myself and eat. So you would only have probably about up to a, of an hour of social time a day when you're working. And, and I feel like I'm a people person and I feel like for the last 15 years, I, um, it's all been about paying bills and, and, you know, trying to get ahead and stuff like that. And which is still be the case. I'll still be working, but, I've always, I said, I feel like I've got, I've waste, I don't want to waste um, some of like my attributes and I like, I'm a very social person. I do like to be around people and why not change the career where that's, that's exactly what that career is. So sure. that's my, um, my new path. So I'm studying right now while working. So, wow. Jeez, I, I, I'm, I'm intrigued right now. I just want to move to Western Australia and just get ready to buy a house. <laughs> I've actually went and bought a suit, so um, ah. keep an eye on my socials because <laughs> I, I think I've owned like one or two suits in my whole life. And I've been, I'm a boardies guy. I wear boardies <laughs> and um, I normally wear T-shirts to um, uh, red carpet events. So <laughs> I, uh, this is where should have got you to wore the suit today, Luke. We should have uh, yeah, made you dress well, up. Yeah, I go pick it up in a couple of hours, so I can't wait to see what I look like. It's, uh, oh, we'll be I went keeping gray. an eye on it. I went for grey, so I'm really trying to, wow. I'm trying to mature, you know. I'm actually really <laughs> trying to mature. 
I'm getting old. I'm, I actually only dyed my hair blonde because I've got a grey hair. So that's the <laughs> actual real reason why. <laughs> Quick yeah. to cover it all up, basically. Yeah. Luke, it, it's an absolute honour to be able to, to chat with you today briefly about your time in Survivor yeah. and everything else. But congratulations from myself and everybody involved in the Hall of Fame for your, for your induction. We've got a couple of goodies which we'll ship off to you as part of yeah. the celebration for this. But uh, on behalf of, I think, every Australian Survivor fan as well, you have yeah. left your impact on the show for the yeah. two appearances and congratulations on your induction into the Hall of Fame. Thanks for that. Before I go, I just want to mention one more person. And this guy has been my absolute rock through the first season of Survivor. I love him to death. And I hope one day we get to go on another show together. Jericho, baby. Yeah. I'm going to drop my boy, uh, drop him some love because... Please do. Uh, he really, like, legit, um, me and him for that first season, it, we, I would have never made it as far as I would have without him, and I'd like to think it was the same, same, and that's why we still got such a good friendship going forward. Now. Cookie Monster. I, I, I almost want to guarantee in a weird way, Luke, he becomes mm. eligible for the Hall of Fame next year. Got yeah. to say, pretty yeah. good chance, I think, of making it in his yeah. first year of yeah, eligibility. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be joining. Well, if you, if you need a vote, I'll put my vote behind him. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Easy. Uh, Perfect. Luke, we appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Thanks.